I mean, we're probably live right now. And I don't even know what's going on, people. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we are live. Um, Stephen Reigns is here. Reigns, right? Reigns. I butcher what? I, I, people butcher my name all the time, so I should be nice enough to not know other people's names. But I didn't take it personally. You're okay, thanks. Fine. Uh, I'm going to talk, talk a little bit about you. Who you oh, are. all right. He's the first city poet of West Hollywood. They honored you to be that. Yes. Yes, he is. Who? Don't you know it? He's written five books or four books, and he edited this one. But I guess you you still you know you wrote stuff for the book, haven't you? For this one? No, this actually the My Life Is Poetry book is a collection uh, of writings generated at the workshop that I taught. Okay, I'm still talking about you. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a poet and an LGBTQ activist. He's well known for the gay rub, not that kind of rub, people. But we'll talk about it. I know you want to know about the rub. Um, and he's here to talk about the big event that he's having at next Tuesday at the LGBTQ, uh, at the Gay and Lesbian Center, about my life is poetry. And they're going to have people talking. And we're going to talk all about that right now. Isn't that exciting? Sit down, everybody. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> That's crazy. The audience is crazy here, isn't it? So tell us a little, how does this event come about and who's going to be there and what's going to happen? Uh, well, I could talk about the event first and then I'll tell you a little bit about how the workshop came about. You can tell me everything so you want one, to tell us. <laughs> one that uh, the event takes place this upcoming Tuesday, October 3rd at 7.30 p.m. at the L.A. Um, Center, which is off of McCadden. And it's going to be an hour program of queer seniors reading autobiographical poetry. So it's not, you know, they're writing poems about their lives and their life experience. Yeah. And it's, um, we, I just came from a rehearsal and I'm just in awe of them and I'm so proud and excited and I can't wait for, you know, people to hear the work that they've been creating for the past few months. Now, these are people that, You've cultivated, you've cultivated basically your poetry through your workshops, right? Yeah. So for the past 11 years, I've had the My Life is Poetry workshop and it's taken place at the, at the center and it's been supported by the Los Angeles County Department of Cultural Affairs, which thankfully funds this workshop every single year, which means that the government is paying to document queer voices. And it, I, right. I love that. That's I love right. living in this city. Yeah, so that's nice. And, you know, participation isn't mandatory. So students have come and gone um, through the class. And we've had some students that have been there from the first class all the way till now. And some people have skipped years and they keep coming back. So, yeah, it, it's a great group. And it's really kind of created a community as well. Sorry, I'm not, I'm listening to you, but <laughs> Facebook today has been doing some weird things. And I was trying to, uh, can share they live and see us? Yeah, they can All see right. us. I'm trying to share it, and Facebook has been I'm – so, I'm so sorry, people, and because I'm really bad about sharing it on my page, mm -hmm. and I really need to get Justin. Okay, so while well, you figure that out, yeah, I'm going to ahead, talk to ahead. them because I don't even know if they're paying attention. All they right. are. <laughs> so – Oh, there I, we are. There, see, we're live. Okay. Is that working? Okay. Okay, we're good. You know, He's down there. He's here. <clears throat> well, I'm just going to keep talking about myself anyway. So when I was 26 years old, I had my first collection of poetry published, and I was surprised at how many people said that they didn't like poetry or they weren't familiar with it. And I felt like it's because they're not reading. It's, you know, like the queer experience is not represented in the poetry that or in the literature that we're given yeah. in school. And so I thought, oh, I'll create a writing workshop because I wanted to encourage queer voices. And I started specifically working with LGBTQ youth. Okay. And I did a workshop locally and then started getting asked to do workshops around the country. So I did workshops around the country for queer youth and then was asked to do a writing workshop for an, a group of an HIV organization asked me to do okay. a workshop. And at that workshop, it was the first time I walked into the room. So with the students, the first writing prompt I always had was write about your first sexual experience because it's okay. so loaded and that it's something that we always remember and there are always good stories about it yeah. and it, it, people don't talk about it that much. So I thought like, oh, this is, it was a great writing prompt. 
And then at this HIV writing workshop, I walked in and there were all of these, I wasn't prepared for it, there were all of these older women there. So like these kind of blue haired old ladies were in my workshop and because I was young and I, I didn't know what else to do, I was like, I'm just using the works, I'm using the writing prompt I always do. And I was so concerned that I was going to essentially make my grandmother write porn. You know, like like these grandmas, I was gonna be like, oh, I'm, I want you to write porn. They fucking loved it. Oh my God. And I still remember some of those stories um, that they wrote in my writing workshop. And when I asked after the writing prep, like who wants to volunteer to read their work to the class, all of the older individuals raised their hands. And that, that really stuck with me. And I just felt about how like I had always assumed that, uh, you know, like my own misconceptions mm -hmm. about, um, being elderly and getting older and what is that like? And and so when I moved to Los Angeles, I thought like, I really want to do that. Like, and there seemed to be a lot of attention given to um, LGBT youth. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like, well, you know what, seniors, like this yeah. is the population that no one's paying attention to. Also, like as baby boomers age, it's only going yeah. to increase. That's true. I mean, because I'm going to be 50 next year. Um, never thinking I would be 50, and I don't feel 50. So, you know, when you look at, at people who are, you know, older and seniors, mm -hmm. they don't, they don't seem to, you know, for themselves, they don't think they're 50 yeah. or 60 or whatever. And and so our culture is so one-sided with the youth and beauty and abs and whatever it's 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 wonderful what you're doing and oh yeah i mean it is a population that's completely muted and underrepresented um and it's i mean there is something about like the fuckability factor right yeah, i have had a date in ages but go ahead <laughs> about your fuckability going, factor let's talk about keeps that. Keeps going like, down, down people keeps it going down no but i know it is and it's sorry mom <laughs> Did your mom watch? That? I don't know. Um, but no, there is that thing about also it's a hard sell because of people's perception of poetry. What's yeah. nice about autobiographical poetry is it's definitely more manageable to sit down and write one poem as opposed to asking someone to write a memoir. Yeah. And I, you know, one of the things I continually say in my workshops is that to, you know, if you describe the slice of cake that you ate, we know what the rest of the cake tasted like. Mm -hmm. So that when writing one poem well about your life, we have a sense of the rest of your life as well. Nice. And yeah, and, and there's really something about that. So, you know, if someone's even in the workshop just a couple times, the things that they write about, um, you know, give us a sense of their full life. Yeah. How did you get, I mean, did you wake up on the day and I'm like, I'm going to be a poet. I mean, how did, how did this come about? Because poetry is, is such a, a, a different world of, of, of writing and a different way of ex expression. And, and sometimes I think the perception of poetry is, you know, rhymy and, and, you know, yeah. but, but how did you, how did, how did you find that as your path? How did it come about for me? Um, I was actually not a very studious student. I wasn't really a good student at all. I wasn't really, I didn't feel like I was good at essentially anything growing up. I wasn't, I didn't have skill in sports. I definitely wasn't good at math. Um, my father was an engineer. I'm sure that was a disappointment. Um, but I felt like reading was the area that I had some space and freedom and that people weren't, you know, that adults in my life weren't asking me, they weren't asking what book I was reading. So I had this incredible freedom to explore and learn about people and cultures and situations that um, a 14 year old boy probably doesn't necessarily get those opportunities. Yeah. And so I found writing exciting and thrilling and I wanted to be a part of it. And I remember, you know, reading books and just anthologies and thinking like, I want to be in one of these one day. Yeah. And then my interest in poetry specifically, it took a while. I I was super into short, short fiction. Okay. For people who don't know what that is, it's basically a short story that takes up a page. And I can write those. No, I mean, that's what's so nice about it, right? I mean, if, for people who don't have a lot of writing stamina or even just a lot of time, just this condensed uh, yeah. storytelling. But somehow it was really the poetry that stuck with me. 
and um, it's essentially the only thing I write these days. That's amazing. Yeah, because I, I'm, I mean, I think I've written some poetry. I was going to pull some out. Wait, you said that. I, I was going to pull some out, but I did not. I did not. I okay, did what not. were the topics of your, but I'm curious what the topics of your poetry was in the past. Uh, like my dog, um, the weather, um, pretty much they weren't very good. And a lot of, a lot of it was depression. Yeah. A lot, a lot of depression. A lot of um, needs, wants, um, wise. You know, why doesn't he like me? Why is my life going the way it is? And, you know, I, 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 it helped through those times yeah. to kind of get, you know, because I, I always find as, as a writer myself, when I put it down on paper, sometimes it just releases it from me that I don't have to, like, hold on to it anymore because now it's there. And then 15 years later, I try to find it. I'm like, where is that thing I wrote? <laughs> Also, well, I mean, that's a mis- a floppy drive. There's a misconception or like this pressure that people feel like anytime they write on the page that it needs to be good or it needs to be good enough to be published. And that's not even true. Mm-hmm. I think the act of writing itself, like that's the joy is in the act of writing. Whether it gets published or not, who cares? Because um, I mean, I don't know about you, but people have asked me a lot, you know, how do I, how do I write a book? You know, Mike, you've written five books. I'm like, you, my one main thing is just sit down and start typing something. Whatever it is, and if it, as you said, if it, it's published, if it's good, if it's not good, at least you're 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 starting to to work on your talents and hone it and get it to you know just type some stuff. Yeah, start doing it. Also, what happens is that people don't recognize how interesting and fascinating their lives are. That people take for granted um, the fact that you were. I mean, I know you wrote poems about your dog, which is very sweet, and the weather. <laughs> At the same time, though, you were a young gay boy fascinated by Charlie's Angels and Wonder Woman. Oh, God. Oh, right? going there? Yeah. Like, yeah. What, what was that like? That's what I'm interested in. Like this poem about this young boy um, interested in these like female figures right. on television. Yeah. So, so most people don't. They take their uniqueness for granted because we live with it every day. Mm, you know, yeah. the poet Colin Kelly, who's out of Atlanta, he has a great Wonder Woman poem talking about oh, his, really? his father's uh, potential embarrassment about, um, you know, his his interest in Wonder Woman. Yeah, I mean, so there's these things about when we sit and we examine and really look at your life that we take a lot for granted. Yeah. And so I just encourage people that. Um, your life stories are unique and they are worthy of documenting and telling and sharing. Exactly. Well, what is, what is your advice for someone who wants to be a poet, an upcoming poet? What, what, what should they do? Uh, take my workshops. There you uh, go. What is your beyond workshop? That, beyond that. Um, I would say is to read. I, I think this is the thing that's very concerning to me these days is that people are not reading. And when I read, a new writer's work, it's clear to me the writers who are reading other poets and the ones who aren't. Mm. And there are just things that we we pick up on, yeah. uh, just like anything else, kind of. Um, and and so that would that would be a big part of it too, is like to have an interest in poetry, you know, to have an interest in like what other poets are doing. Um, and. And it doesn't mean your work even needs to sound like theirs, but just to be familiar with it. And I think that's how people become better writers. Who's your idols in poetry? Oh, that's such a long list. Oh, okay. it's not that long, but hold no, on. It is. You need to get the note cards. I dropped my note cards. I'm, uh, I'm such a professional. What? Uh, you have note cards. That's professional. I, I do. Right? I do. Yeah. Um, no. I fired my PA today, so that's why. Back to you. <laughs> no, it varies all the time. I had such a crush on Frank O'Hara um, that I, I mean, I think for a year was just writing poems yeah. like he would write. Um, it, it goes in and out all the time, and um, my, I mean, I'm not fickle, but it's a long list, and it's Ooh. hard to think of everyone right now. So, um, what is your favorite poem you've ever written for your? for yourself and wow that's a great question my favorite poem I think um, I don't know if it's my favorite but it's a poem that stands out to me because it was really kind of like a breakthrough poem Mm -hmm. that I was writing in a certain way in a certain style 
And I wrote a poem about Gaetan Dugas, who was the French Canadian flight attendant known as Patient Zero, okay. for being responsible for um, allegedly being responsible for um, infecting, you know, for passing AIDS around. Um, and and so it was, I didn't even read about him. I just saw and the band played on. I hadn't even read the book. I just saw the movie, and which is a great film, a long film. But I was very haunted by that. I just felt like I don't believe that. I didn't believe that. Um, I just have more faith in humans than that. I had more faith, but and it also seemed really convenient to like blame the epidemic on a foreigner, right? And uh, then like you know the the gays are doing it to themselves, and and so it just didn't ring true to me. And I wrote that poem, and then later on did research that. Every assumption I had about Gaetan was actually correct. <laughs> that um, and and so we've rewritten this man's history. And so for me, there was something about you know through poetry to kind of talk about that experience of how unfortunate that this man who is a victim of the virus, just like thousands and thousands of others, and yet Randy Schultz purposefully, you know, kind of wrote him as the perpetrator mm -hmm. and though the cdc was misinformed at the time it's you know so yeah so that that poem really stands out to me because then i started writing just poems outside of my own experience and kind of wrote these cultural memory poems nice mm -hmm. um well, let's talk about i brought it up in the beginning the, the gay rub yes the gay rub it's not what you think people it's not what you think at all everyone loves a rubbing <laughs> And you got it, it got a lot of press. I remember it. And uh, talk about it. And are we going? Are you going to go back and do more of this? Yeah, the Gay Rub is an ongoing project where I collect rubbings of queer landmarks from all over the world, and I ask other people to participate in doing that. So most towns would have markers about the founders of the town or um, events that happened in certain landmarks. And what I'm asking people to do is to create rubbings of markers that denote gay history or gay historical figures. And uh, and then these rubbings are displayed all in one location. Yep. And it's been amazing, the institutions that have shown the exhibition. Mm -hmm. I am thrilled with it. It's been in some really interesting places. The first time it showed was at the One Archives Gallery here you know, from um, most people are familiar that the One Institute is the um, largest gay and lesbian archive in the country, and they have a gallery space. And so it was shown there. And then the second place it was shown was Loyola Marymount University. Wow. A Catholic <laughs> university showed this really queer art exhibition with yeah. this problematic, um, exciting name called the Gay Rub, and then it went to North Carolina and St. Louis, and I feel like I'm forgetting some places. Uh, now, did you release a book with the rubs, or is that something going to happen? Or You know what? Um, people have approached me about a book of the rubbings, and since it's an ongoing project, I wouldn't know when to say, okay, this is enough. And well, I don't think you, you could do volume one and volume two and volume three. Oh, I like your thinking. I like your thinking on that. Hello. Um, and it's Part of it is that there's such a tactile nature to the rubs themselves, and yeah. they're really they're all on white background with black, um, you know, rubbed in black, and they're really kind of haunting. And it's nice to experience them all at once in a room. It's also interesting to see who gets um, who gets legitimized and um, noted in our history, and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're a black lesbian and likely you won't have a marker, you know, and, and it's yeah. so it's so interesting to note that. And there are other people like Harvey Milk and Tennessee Williams that there are, there are so many plaques out there with their yeah. names on it. Um, but unfortunately, there are, um, there are a lot of non-white people um, who are well, definitely not. And it's good that you're doing that. And, and hopefully our culture will change and move on from where it is right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about your five, your five books and where can they get them and, and what are, you know, is each one a different 
compilation or a different way of your writing or different poetry or yeah there i don't even know how, how many so i'm i'm glad you said five i don't know if you counted I but, um what what would i say about them their books i wrote i should do a better job of selling them right no, now no no it's good I mean, no um do you have a theme so, on each one or no not really but i would say that they can buy them on amazon so um inheritance was the last actual full collection but i also did a series of books that i edited called three pack jack okay. and that series of books there's um the text was taken from performance nights that i curated okay. um at akbar which is a bar in los angeles in those events what i wanted to do is do you know the recipes for children where you kind of sneak vegetables into junk food? What? <laughs> do you know about this? I don't know. They should do it for me because I don't eat enough vegetables. Yeah, I think Jerry Seinfeld's wife even has a cookbook. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I've, I've seen it. Okay. Yeah. And I, felt, I think it's mean and rude and horrible for children. Well, that's what I wanted to do with these events. But I wanted to have like really smutty events with lots of substance behind them. What? Stephen does smutty events? <laughs> So surprising, everyone. And so that's why I just felt like this is great. And I also think that it's something that we don't, um, you know, I appreciate highbrow and lowbrow, but what happens when we mix those two together? You know, what is that like? Right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's see. Oh, thank you, Sunny. Sunny sends her greetings. Ah, uh, Sunny, hello. Um, about the event that is happening next mm -hmm. Tuesday. Now, your workshops have been going for 11 years. Yeah. Now, are you doing more workshops upcoming? Or are there more workshops? Can people sign up and, and, and tell them how they can get involved about your poetry? Yeah, those are all your great questions. So one, that this reading on Tuesday night is the culmination of this iteration of the workshop. So um, another workshop will possibly start up again in the summer okay. of 2018. And the the event is free. It's open to the public. Free. It, I know everyone loves free, right? Yeah, gotta come. It's free. And That's the right. refreshments afterward. I mean, come on. Um, I love refreshments. <laughs> so what else do I want to say? It's also the. It's only an hour long. Um, there are a lot of students reading, but uh, it's kept very brief because over an hour of listening to people read is kind of, it could be really taxing. Yeah. And it's true. You asked some other questions. So it's been going on 11 years. What were, what were the other questions? Well, no, I, you said the workshop's going to come out next year, another one, hopefully. And where can people find when the workshop's going to come, where they can sign up? At my website is the best way, stephenrains.com. That's Stephen with a V and Rain spelled R-E-I-G-N-S. And okay. the book cover we have behind us is the first year the workshop took place, I edited the work from over 22, I think maybe 22 seniors, yeah. and edited it into an anthology, and every student had three poems published and a portrait taken by the portrait photographer, Jenny Walters. Wow. And Dorothy Allison, who wrote Bastard Out of Carolina and Cave Dweller and Trash and The Women Who Hate Me, I mean, she's one of my favorite writers, she wrote the most touching introduction to the book that the first time I read it, I cried to, for this project to have the support of a writer who really understood the importance of such a workshop and yeah. the document of the writings themselves. This kind of workshop has never happened before. Um, I, I know it's the first in the country to have autobiographical poetry writing of queer seniors. It's yeah. just, um, and 11 years ago, you know, it was a really different time culturally. Yeah. And so it was, it's still progressive and innovative, but it definitely was 11 years ago I when mean, I started it. Through the whole 11 years, it's been a roller coaster of craziness with the LGBTQ yeah. life and, you know, just all our lives now. Who knows what's going to go on? I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> well, but. Also, it's stories of people who have, who are used to that roller coaster ride. Yeah. So when Trump was elected, I, I mean, just kind of the wit of gay men, I had one of my students shrug his shoulders and he was like, I lived through Reagan. I'm going to live through this. Um, there you go. Yeah. So it's, um, and that doesn't mean they're not politically active and aware, but it is that thing of they're, they're used to witnessing the ups and downs of our culture. Yeah. 
Absolutely. So um, what's next for you? What is next for me? A lot is going on. Um, though I did say I write um, only poetry, I was asked to submit a short story for an anthology being published in Berlin, and it's going to be in English and German that's based on a piece by Tom of Finland. So oh, wow. I was given a Tom of Finland sketch to write a short story on. Wow. Yeah, so once again, my... You Have know, you finished with, it? Have you finished the story? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. And they're thrilled with it. So I'm so excited that's coming out. That will be coming out in November, late November, early December. Is it a tantalizing story? Of course. It's based what? on a Tom of Finland drawing. Yeah, no, I, and I... And I went Did you draw yourself it. into the story? Hmm. <laughs> no, um, so that's coming out. Other things that are coming up, um, the gay rub, I'm continually collecting rubbings from that yeah. and getting rubbings from other people. I facilitate the Lambda Literary Book Club every month. That's it's, right. the, it's the last Tuesday of the month. It happens at the West Hollywood Library. And, um, and what do they do on there? What, what do they do at the club? So a uh, book is selected, um, myself and a few others, we um, kind of curate the selection of books and people read the books and they come in and we discuss it. Okay. And it's, um, it's just a queer book club. And it's a very large queer book club too. And really? And some kind of sexy guy. So What? Uh, yeah. So <clears throat> people are like, so when you were talking about that dating thing, maybe you need to start going to book clubs. I think that's it, that's where it could be at for you. Mike. Yeah, I can I can hike some books behind me. Maybe I'll sell some books, meet somebody, read a book. Maybe I'll read a book. I haven't read a book in a long time. All of those things can happen. All of those, it's, it's a magical place. All of Thank God for my show. That is all no. <laughs> behind the curtain. Thank you for my show. Uh, <laughs> so, well, that's well, that's when, when is that going to happen? Uh, that happens the last Tuesday of every month. Last because Tuesday. October is um, October is one week early due to the, um, the Halloween party. Oh yeah, it's the Halloween. Mm -hmm. I forgot. But that this, for October though, we're choosing. I chose um, Clyde Barker's Mister Be Gone book. Okay. And Clyde Barker, um, you know, the horror writer, which people, I'm always surprised who don't know that um, he came out publicly. Yeah. In um, the Advocate magazine, I as a writer. Yeah, he came out publicly as a writer. Exactly. And he's someone who is such a strong... I remember when this book came out that he purposely had his book release party at a different light bookstore. Oh, uh, I did too. But who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> well, for him, it was a, because yeah. he knew that a large crowd would show up. And there was an, a line for four hours that people waited four hours in line. And they sold a lot of books. And he purposely chose it for a bookstore that would be supportive of the community. And he could have chosen any bookstore yeah. in town. And... I love that he was so community minded to do that. And so that book came out maybe six years ago and so we're reading it now for the book club and it seems like a great horror book to read for Halloween. That's month. nice. I didn't have that many people at my books my book signing. Look what I wrote. How how did you get in your panties? Oh no, I don't know. How did, it's how to get into poetry. See, I'm I'm a great writer. Um I'm just looking over my notes here. Okay. How did you come up with the title Behind the Curtain? I like titles, so how did you come up Behind with Behind the Curtain's that? not mine. Behind the Curtain is, um, it's basically, um, it's an autograph uh, show. Basically, celebrities uh, go on and online, and they autograph, and pe people are, they, they pay to talk to the celebrities like we're talking to, actually, they would be talking to them one-on-one um, -on, -one on a split screen. And it's uh, I was working with them, and I was the host of the events. And uh, they, hopefully they'll they'll start up soon. And uh, I'm just uh, I'm just a part of the behind the curtain family. So the most of the readers, so most of the viewership, they're interested in autographs. And yeah, that was the main thing. Yes. Okay, and you have a lot of things autographed. What does a artist's autograph mean to you? Because I I waited. I went to an Alison Moyet concert. And I waited for her, like people were waiting in line for an autograph. And, and it's that interesting experience of like, what, what is it about that that means so much to us? And I, I question it. And I, I hold all of like my signed books in such high regard and I love them. But what does it mean, even if I wasn't a part of it, like I've purchased books that um, authors who are no longer living, like their signed yeah. editions. And what does that autograph mean to you? I think the autograph mean is, 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 it's being 
close to the person who actually is creating something that, that you loved, or even if you bought the book afterwards, you know that they've touched that book. The author who has authored it or, or, or an actor who's been on a photograph or a movie, the, it's, it's, it's being able to have that connection with that person and knowing that they've touched their, their work. I mean, I've, you know, I, I'm sure people have asked you to autograph your book. Yeah, they've asked me to autograph mine. And I find it so touching that they want my autograph. Um, it, it, it's, it, it is an emotional experience. And, and, you know, I have hundreds of things in my apartment signed yeah. by all the angels and, and Linda Carter and all these people. And, you, you know, you can ask Cheryl, you can ask Tanya Roberts, you can <laughs> ask Kate, like, another autograph. And I... I think it's just it's it brings it more personal and it's it's a much more, you know, I don't know it just it, it it's that that touch and but that autograph has been for years people have always autographed stuff yeah. and it's it, it is such a an experience I think a lot of it is a takeaway from meeting the person and doing you know when you go to autograph shows and, and you get get to see them sometimes you have to give them twenty five dollars for it fifty dollars sixty dollars who knows. Um, or well, stalk them. Yeah. Don't and, stalk them. And I used to think that um, the selfie was going to be the new autograph, autograph, but I don't think it's ever going to take the replace of an autograph. No. I don't think it's ever going to replace it. No. Because you're right, there is something that, I mean, that we have that photo of like, oh, when I met so-and-so, but yeah. it's something else to have that, like, that tangible object. What's interesting with books is if it's personally inscribed to someone's name, it actually has less value. So a book yeah. that just has a signature on it has more value in the marketplace, yeah. but actually on my bookshelf, it kind of means less to me. Yes, it does. Yeah. Isn't it weird? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to autograph this to you or just sign it? I'm like, to me, of course. And then I'm like, I can't sell that now. I would never sell anything. Maybe the Kathleen Turner one because she was mean to me. But oh, wait, I used to have a crush on Kathleen Turner. Yeah, she, she was mean. Not nice. Not nice. Not nice. And I'm not a person who likes to talk about celebrities. So Kathleen Turner used to chew on pencil erasers. She would take them out so it would open up her um, her vocal cavity so she would have that voice. Isn't that an interesting fact Maybe she swallowed a couple of them. <laughs> anyway, we're wrapping up the show now. We've gone over. Oh, my goodness. It's been lovely to have you on my show. Thank you so much for having me. Tell the great. audience where they can find it the, the event okay. on Tuesday. So you can find more information at stevenrange.com, S-T-E-V-E-N-R-E-I-G-N-S.com. Um, on my website as well, you can see a video about the workshop. You can also purchase uh, the books I talked about and find out about some of my upcoming events. Where else can you find me? Facebook. I'm very active on Facebook, sometimes Instagram, rarely on Twitter. Rarely on Twitter. And then, of course, Tuesday is the event. It is uh, where it's at, at the Village at on Tuesday, October 3rd at 7 p.m. It is free, people, so there's no reason not to show up. And there's going to be refreshments. Um, it's going to be – everyone's going to be reading their poetry for my life is poetry. I'm Mike Pingle. Thank you for joining us today at the Mike Pingle Show here on Behind the Curtain. Um, I hope you have a great weekend. Be good to each other. And um, I just want to give a shout out to Hugh Hepferner, who passed away mm. yesterday. Um, I met him. I worked for Playboy. Um, I hope you're in heaven chatting with Marilyn and Farah. All right. Y'all have a good day. Thanks for coming. See you Bye. next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.